ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम थर्ड कैंटो चैप्टर ट्वेंटी वन एंड टाइटल कॉन्वर्सेशन बिटवीन मनु एंड करदमा टेक्स्ट नंबर सिक्सटीन प्रजापते स्ते वच साधी शतंत्या लोक किलायम का महतो नुबद्ध अहम च लोकानुगतो वहामी बलिंच शुक्ला निमिषाय तुभ्यम ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाईज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रीला प्रभु भाज के जाय translation oh my lord you are the master and leader of all living entities under your direction all conditioned souls as if bound by rope are constantly engaged in satisfying their desires following them o oh embodiment of religion i also bear oblations for you who are eternal time purport by shila prabhu pad ki jai in the katha upanishad it is stated that the supreme lord is the leader of all living entities he is their sustainer and the awarder of all their necessities and desires no living entity is independent all are dependent on the mercy of the supreme lord therefore the vedic instruction is that one should enjoy life under the direction of the supreme leader the personality of godhead vedic literatures like ishopanishad direct that since everything belongs to the supreme personality of godhead one should not encroach upon another's property but should enjoy one's individual allotment the best program for every living entity is to take direction from the supreme lord and enjoy material or spiritual life a question may be raised since kardama muni was advanced in spiritual life why then did he not ask the lord for liberation why did he want to enjoy material life in spite of his personally seeing and experiencing the supreme lord The answer is that not everyone is competent to be liberated from material bondage. It is everyone's duty, therefore, to enjoy according to his present position, but under the direction of the Lord or the Vedas. The Vedas are considered to be the direct words of the Lord. The Lord gives us the opportunity to enjoy material life as we want, and at the same time, He gives directions for the modes and processes of abiding by the Vedas, so that. gradually one may be elevated to liberation from material bondage the conditioned souls who have come to the material world to fulfill their desires to lord it over material nature are bound by the laws of nature the best course is to abide by the vedic rules that will help one to be gradually elevated to liberation kardama muni addresses the lord as shuka which means the leader of religion one who is pious should follow the rules of religion for such rules are prescribed by the lord himself no one can manufacture or concoct a religion religion refers to the injunctions or laws of the lord in bhagavad gita the lord says that religion means to surrender unto him therefore one should follow the vedic regulations and surrender unto the supreme lord because that is the ultimate goal of perfection in human life one should live a life of piety follow the religious rules and regulations marry and live peacefully for elevation to the higher status of spiritual realization the sense the bhakti dans purport kardama muni is praying to the supreme lord for marrying a girl of the right disposition who will be a veritable cow of plenty in my married life to satisfy my lusty desires he takes shelter of the lotus feet of the lord and here it's continuing that oh lord you are the master and the leader of all living entities under your direction all conditioned souls as if bound by rope are constantly engaged in satisfying their desires following them oh embodiment of religion i also bear oblations for you who are eternal time so it is a fact that in this material world the living entities are full of desires they take up a body and there are so many desires associated with the physical body there are so many desires that are associated with the bodily concept 
of ego that one projects into the society. That is the false ego. So there are so many gross and subtle desires the living entity is full of in this material world. And it is clearly revealed in the scriptures that these desires of the living entity, not only the desires, even maintenance, sustainer and awarder of all the necessities, necessities and desires, it is the Supreme Lord who is seated in everybody's heart as a super soul. This is the Leela of the Lord, Ashirodaksha Vishnu. The Lord, whatever he does, it is his Leela. So the Lord has is engaged in this Leela of giving the living entities freedom to desire what they want. And as per the as they deserve, the Lord as a supreme judge is seated in their heart and is sanctioning as a Param Ishwara of the material energy, as the supreme controller of material energy. By his sanction, the agencies, including Kala, start moving for the fulfillment of the desires of the living entity. The, the mind, the intelligence, everything is under the control of Kala. So it is, it is not that it is my intelligence and all these. The Kala is moving in all these things. And the living entity is simply like a one who eats the fruit. The Isha Upanitsa describes the, the, the living entity as sitting on a tree along with, like a bird, with another bird. The two birds are in this tree of this body. And this tree produces so many fruits. Our basic uh, existential philosophy of everyone in this world is actually to enjoy the fruits of this tree. The fruits are in various forms. Gross sensuality is one type of fruit. Then love, affection, care, respect, love from the society is another kind of thing for the mind. Then there is a fruit for intelligence where one gets uh, knowledge, understanding, pleasure of understanding, pleasure of knowledge, uh, want to know, want to be a knowledgeable person, want to be knowing everything, should not have any doubt. These are all the pleasures of the intellectual body. Then there is the ego body, the social body, social ego body, where one wants name, fame, adoration, social respect, social recognition, it's not that one is satisfied with himself, that I know who I am. No, he has to be certified by the world outside. Oh, they say that I am a great devotee. They say that I am a, I am a successful man. So this kind of ego we nurture. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a subtle body, false ego we nurture. So these are all the different fruits in the, which can be derived from this tree. This is a tree. And... These fruits are not only sweet, they are also bitter sweets. Bitter and sweet. Sometimes you get respect, sometimes you get insult. Uh, sometimes you get pleasure, sometimes you get pain. Sometimes you get so much sense gratification, sometimes you will be sick and you will be only suffering in pain. Constant pain. So these are all the things that are given, are the fruits in this tree. In this tree. And the Ishopanishad described that the super soul is seated in this tree and it is not attached to any fruits. The living entity is after different fruits. And according to his desire and according to his karma, the Lord sanctions the fruits and the living entity eats the good and bad fruits or sweet and bitter fruits of this life. In other words, in the material world, everybody is existing for rasa. The fruit means rasa, sensuality rasa, emotional rasa, intellectual rasa, you know, power rasa. False ego means power, power, influence, this rasa, he lives for this. This is the basis for material existence. Everybody in the material world is after this. So now here Kardamamuni is wanting some material desire, he is praying to the Lord. And as we discussed yesterday, the principle ultimately is to worship the Supreme Personality of God, to recognize the supremacy of the Lord and to worship Him. That is the highest principle, even if one has so many other shortcomings. If His recognition of the Supreme Lord is very prominent as, as the sustainer, awarder of all desires, and He prays to the Lord, 
is like the demigods they pray to the lord and he sanctions so that is one kind of bhakti that is also uh, so many incidences are given in shrimad bhagavatam which is about kama bhakti but very clearly finally it is established in shrimad bhagavatam or bhagavat dharma that the goal of human life is actually to get attain love of god and to go beyond this birth and death in this material world and that is the ultimate goal of human life that is what a human being should be desiring so here is surprising as propat says that he saw the supreme lord face to face instead of asking liberation from this material world he is asking for material desires so as we discussed yesterday there are so many um, incidences in shrimad bhagavatam like this we have to understand what is the direction for us from our acharya for for uh, adopting the lessons from this uh, uh, leelas that are described in shrimad bhagavatam so it is not that we also you know one should live a life of piety follow the religious rules and regulations marry and live peacefully for elevation to higher statuses of spiritual realization so then somebody may take this line and say oh propat says one should prabhu one should live a life of piety following the religious rules and regulations marry propat says one should marry you see should is there and propat says should live peacefully the temple is not creating a peaceful atmosphere but we should be living peacefully you should do everything so that we can live peacefully for elevation to a higher status of spiritual life realization so we have to understand the overall philosophy of krishna consciousness that propad is spread he is giving in shrimad bhagavatam in shrimad bhagavatam he is talking about pure religion and that is what propad is talking about pure devotional service and that is the reason why the bhagavatam verse is in this prayers of kardama muni this is also included that i am foolish huh? only persons deprived of their intelligence by the spell of deluding energy will worship those feet with a view to attain the trivial and momentary pleasures of the senses which are even pers- which are available even for persons rotting in the hell so this is the lesson for us in the entire kardama munis leela we as gaudiya vaishnavas we are not into this pravritti mark of leading a materially positive life in this world we are into nivritti mark or doing whatever is minimum to keep the body and soul together as far as our material necessities and duties are concerned and we take pleasure in transcendental pleasure of devotional service and then increase the quality of devotional service from mixed devotion service to purer and purer and purer devotional service that is actually the goal of our uh, path the gaudiya vaishnava path not the path of pravrti marga therefore but of course we are preachers so what may be suiting for us may not be suit for somebody who is a karmi to make him krishna conscious we have to explain to him we have to make him understand as propat says everybody cannot take everything the reason propat is it's everybody's the answer is that not everyone is competent to be liberated from material bondage it's if somebody does not take to the chanting of the hari krishna mahamantra seriously if one cannot take to the entire process of you know associating with the lord for 4 5 hours a day then it is very difficult for him then this path is better this path of recognizing the lord admitting the material desires going through those material desires regulating those material desires it is good but one should understand that it is not impossible in this kali yuga irrespective of what one's birth is where one is born how what is his background it everything is immaterial if one takes to the chanting of the hari krishna mahamantra if one learns to associate with the holy name of the lord 
then the shortcut is available for everyone. Prabhupada repeatedly says that this path of chanting Hare Krishna is like getting into the lift. The pure devotion service is, is like getting into a lift and going up and not stopping at different floors. A staircase, you have to go through different floors. A lift, you don't even see the floors. It goes straight to the top. And that is exactly this uh, special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Ch special mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it is, we have to follow that properly. The success is very simple. And success is very far if you don't follow exactly what Prabhupada has given. When a super discount is given, every procedure should be followed. So this Kali Yuga, in this Kali Yuga, it's a super discount which is not available even for other Yugas. That super discount is available for us. A discounted path for liberation, freedom from three modes of material nature. So if we adhere to this, then one need not think that, no, I have to go through this Pravarti Marg, I have to do all these things and then only I will succeed. No. Even in Krishna consciousness movement, if you see, when Srila Prabhupada admitted women, men, got them married, the focus was devotion service. And if those devotees who have strictly uh, chanted the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, followed the regulative principles, they would have had no problem, whatever. Even if problem was there, spiritually they are successful. Problems will always be there in the material world. So many people may criticize. Some people criticize. How did Prabhupada make grahasthas and then, you know, send the husband somewhere, wife somewhere, and then, you know, husband is distributing books, wife is distributing books, carrying a child, all these things. You know, somebody can go into a different trip and say that, how it is all these things. Yes, this is the direct mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu they received. If somebody had faith in that, then they will struggle. Because it's, who is the, the Lord is in everybody's heart. He would wipe out people's karma. Everybody's karma he will wipe out. As you surrender, I reciprocate, Krishna says. So if you don't have faith in the process, if you don't have faith in the spiritual master's words, that pure devotion service satisfies everything. You don't have faith in that, then we will be caught by the material desires. Material desires is described like ropes. In this verse. Yeah, as, if, as if bound by rope, we are constantly engaged in satisfying their desires. Desire after desire after desire after desire of that. Life goes on till death. And that death also, so many desires unfulfilled. Desire is a cause of continued existence in this material world. But at the same time, desire is not something that the living entity can stop. Because it is the nature of the soul to desire. In the last verse we saw Durashaya. What is, what is against the Shastra is Dura Asha. Lusty desires. One can desire to please the spiritual master. One can desire to please the Supreme Lord. One's desire should be there. Just like Arjuna. The entire central theme of Bhagavad Gita is what? Arjuna did not want to desire, Krishna said you desire. Krishna, Arjuna wanted to desire something else. What was it? I do not want to enjoy this royal happiness by killing these people. I do not want to kill these people. I do not want to inflict, inflict violence on these people. I do not want to break these families. It's all very painful for me, he said. And Prabhupada appreciates all that. Prabhupada says, see, these are the qualities of a devotee. Kindness. These are the quality, compassion, not selfish. These are the qualities of a Vaishnava. At the same time, Krishna said, no, now, see, just these Vaishnava qualities alone are not enough. I am desiring that this war should be fought. I am desiring that you should fight. So, Arjuna finally, in spite of keeping all his feelings, as an individual, as a Vaishnava, he has got attachments. I cannot kill all this, all these things, understand. But still I will follow what you say. What you say, my Lord, I will follow. So this is Krishna consciousness. Not simply, 
you cannot stretch Vaishnava qualities to the infinity and say that is Vaishnava, no. So many nice qualities of a person are there. But everything has to be for the pleasure of the Lord. You cannot be kinder than the Lord. You cannot be more compassionate than the Lord. Okay, he was compassionate. He didn't want to kill them. The Lord cut off his compassion at that point. Kill them. I'm ready. I'm ready. So the, everywhere the Lord's supreme desire is the most important thing for a Vaishnava. And that is what they for now the principles of surrender. To have no other desire than the desire of the Lord. So desire is very essential. And yesterday we discussed specific desires. Specific desires, are they permitted or not? They are permitted. But their specific desire should be somebody else's desire. Should be descending. It should be Prabhupada's desire. It should be Krishna's desire. Suppose Prabhupada has given a very specific instruction. Then you should follow that. That is specific desire. Then you adopt that specific desire. Suppose according to the system, once a mystical process by which Krishna's desire, the devotee should always desire. Without desire, there is no life. Without Icha Shakti, nothing happens. But what is that desire? Desire is to please Prabhupada and Krishna. That is our desire. And that desire to please Prabhupada and Krishna, Prabhupada as a whole system, one cannot just simply concord something that, okay, let me now, you know, you know, your one-year-old bhakta, you come, you say, I want to build a skyscraper in the middle of the ocean. So he'll only be, will it, will it, uh, is that uh, desire sanctioned like that? There's a process for that. One has to learn how to become free from personal desire. Suppose the person is free from all that, then he is pure. It is not impossible. Even in the middle of the ocean, a skyscraper will come up. But Krishna does not want skyscrapers. Krishna wants our devotion. Just like there is point A, point B. From here you have to go here. As far as you are concerned, you are thinking that, oh, I should go here, I should complete this, that's what Krishna wants. But Krishna won more than that, because that any in one moment he can make it appear. Like he made a palace appear for Sudama. He can make it appear in one second. Just by his wish. What is the Lord more interested? The path, the journey you take from here to here will purify you. Will purify so many souls. Will give opportunity for so many living entities to practice devotional service. Because service and devotion service is the best use of human life. In animal life one cannot do service. In human life one cannot do service. That is why when Krishna Arjuna, Krishna preaches to Arjuna that, you know, one who thinks he has to eat the fruits of his activity is a miser. How is it a miser? Miser is a person who cannot, who underutilizes his riches. A rich person, you know, doesn't use his money for enjoying, he's called a miser. So Krishna calls Arjuna, don't be miserly. So what is this miserliness? What is the richness he is talking here? Human life. Human life to work without fruit of activities, without claiming the proprietorship of the fruit, without claiming the enjoyership of the fruit, is something that only human being can, a soul in a human being can practice. Uh, what is the big benefit in practice, practicing it? Yes, that is a real taste of the soul. That is a real enjoyment of the soul. That is a real self in the taste of the self in the self. 
So only in human form of life one can touch one's spiritual happiness, spiritual satisfaction. In animal life it's not possible. So when you've got a human life where you can actually start experiencing the taste of service, taste of devotion service, then if you're not utilizing it, you're, like, you're working like an animal, then you're a miser. So desire is a must, desire will be there, but desire, we have to transcend our desires beyond the body and bodily ego and try to satisfy Krishna's desire and Prabhupada's desire. And specific desires, also yesterday we discussed, a devotee asked a question about specific desire. I said one should not generally make any specific desires on his own. He can seek protection, he can seek general protection, general shelter, general guidance, general spiritual intelligence, all these things you can ask. But one does not, a devotee does not ask the Lord specifically this particular thing I want. Even in his service. Because that becomes something like a relationship of an order supplier. And in our Siddhanta, nothing wrong in that. The Lord is not offended by that. The Lord is a supplier of everybody's desires. But now, Parampara, we are taught how to practice pure devotion service under surrender, that you don't have to ask the Lord anything for yourself. If you ask anything for yourself, which means you are, you are not feeling the shelter of the Lord. The Lord knows what we want. My, our life is in the Lord's hands. What he wants, he'll give. What he wants to take, he will take. In this attitude, the devotee is only desiring that I engage in devotion service of the Lord under the Lord's direction, under the Lord's, guru, Lord's pure devotee's direction, under the Lord's pure devotee's system set up. Under that direction, mystically it will work. That is why this Krishna consciousness movement is moving. It's still expanding. People may say Prabhupada is not there, but Prabhupada is there. And Prabhupada is working through his institutional mechanism. These are all his desires. How we set up the institution. How in a temple devotees should carry on devotional service. All these things. It's a mystical process that we are following. And it, 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 we cannot explain many things how it works. But still the will of the Lord manifests. The desire of the Lord manifests. To the degree to which we are aligned with Srila Prabhupada. If you're not aligned with Prabhupada, then we will get a lot of difficulties. A lot of difficulties in the sense, not difficulties in preaching, we we'll get a lot of personal difficulties we'll get. We will lose our peace of mind. We will not have peace of mind to do devotional service. It is not anybody's fault, it's our fault, our own anarthas. So the, the role of desire is very important. It is through desire that that everything happens. The problem is independent desire, not desire. Problem is independent desire. Desire that simply originates in you. That is a problem. So therefore always even the devotees always consult other devotees in different programs to preach to expand preaching, we consult, we discuss, and then we take all the Vaishnava's blessings, and then we move forward. One is never overconfident that the Lord is directing me, I am whatever I think is right. No, Krishna also does not like that pride. Krishna wants the devotees to feel that they are servant of the servant of the servant, not simply his direct servant. So everything is discussed in a manner, in, in a proper mood, that Krishna will manifest through the Vaishnavas, different things. And we have to ultimately, our goal is to please Guru and Krishna, not simply be nice, nice people. That is important. Arjuna wanted to be a nice person. Everybody will glorify him if that way. That's what he said. What is the use? Everybody will laugh at me after I kill all of them and sit on the throne. 
So that was not, that should never be the criterion. Krishna gave even material reasoning to Arjuna. You are, what you are doing is foolishness. You think that people will appreciate you. People will laugh at you. You ran away from the battlefield. Whatever you do, people will laugh at. If you show goodness, they will laugh at you. You are a coward. If you don't show goodness, then they will again criticize you. What kind of cruel man you are. You killed everybody. So irrespective, forget all that. I am telling you to fight. Don't be attached to the fruits, positive or negative. You just go ahead and fight. Any questions? Mike. Hare Krishna, Guru. Uh, in the Dhruva Maharaj, after doing uh, meditation on the Supreme Lord, he has Darshan of the Lord. After that, he told that I don't have any material desire because I'm satisfied with the form of the Lord. But here, Kardama Muni, after having the Darshan of the Lord, still having a material desire. Hmm. So how to understand it? See, that is why it is said, look at the statement. Why did he want to enjoy material life in spite of his personally seeing and experiencing the Supreme Lord? The answer is that not everyone is competent to be liberated from material bondage. Dhruva Maharaj was, was in a better position spiritually than Kardama Muni. Still Dhruva Maharaj, even though he felt completely detached, he didn't want any desire from the Lord. Look what the Lord did. Lord fulfilled all his desires. This is another path. That the devotees know that if the Lord thinks it is inevitable for me to burn these anarthas, Lord is not cruel. Lord will arrange all these material things. The problem is when you seek your own pleasure, that is the sin. Then you cannot be in the spiritual world. Spiritual world, you are also enjoyer of pleasure, but you are not seeker of your pleasure. You are seeker of Krishna's pleasure. Pleasure is not sin. Seeking self-pleasure is sin. Ananda myobhyasa, the principle of existence is pleasure. Of course, the principle of existence is not pleasure for, principle of existence for each living entity is not pleasure. That is always misunderstood. Ananda myobhyasa means total ananda, just like Prabhupada says, pouring water in the root of the tree. The entire tree, the ananda for the entire tree is a principle of existence. That is declared in Srimad Bhagavanam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, everywhere. That principle of... That doesn't mean that each... For me, my principle is... My principle of existence is Ananda. No. My principle of existence is service to the Supreme Lord. And Supreme Lord, no doubt, you don't seek Ananda, but you become full of Ananda. Your Ananda is given by the Lord. So you will experience Ananda. That's it. There's a difference between experiencing ananda given by the Lord as prasadam, as a blessing, as a mercy. We are all pleasure beings, no doubt. There's a need for pleasure, but we don't seek pleasure. We seek Lord's pleasure. And our pleasure is given by the Lord. Satta, chitta, ananda, pleasure, whatever it is bestowed. So devotees don't pray anything, but with gratitude, the, whatever the Lord gives, he takes it. He engages in a way in which it is reinvested in further devotional service. He doesn't give up anything. In this way, he burns his karma also. He burns his karma also. That, is, if that be the Lord's way to purify him. So, Karma Muni is in this situation. Dhruva Maharaj is in a little better, more spiritually elevated situation. He immediately forgot all this thing, material desire. But still, he did not desire but the Lord gave him a, a, a universe to enjoy as an emperor, as a ruler, almost like Narayana. So that is a gift that Lord gave him. So each person is different. It's not a phenomena that if you see the Lord, then you get purified. If you say, I don't want to be purified, you won't be purified. You see the Lord also. You see the deity also. Everybody sees the deity. They don't become pure devotees. They see the deity, worship the deity and go and the Lord as a super soul will reciprocate with them. Their material desires will be fulfilled. They don't become pure devotees. Ultimately, we have to desire 
that is why it is very important to understand the spirit of the acharya spirit of our parampara our spirit of parampara is not you know to become uh, uh, simply tapasvis with you know 24 hours austerity and all these things that's not the our spirit is good bad everything we want to engage in service of the lord devotional service the pleasure of service service for the sake of service now service is not service means you know service means the activity and the result so activity also one should understand that as soon as i have i have done an activity devotion service i am already satisfied my reward is already obtained as far as i am concerned because i am fortunate to have served the lord now result it is left to the lord it is under his jurisdiction but have i given my full attention have i given my full desire have i given my full determination to do what my guru has ordered that's all end of it whatever happens is is in the law controls or law control of the lord i am not the proprietor of the results i am not the cause of the work there are five other causes four other causes of action i am not the cause of the result i am not the only cause of the result i can only play my part and the lord has his own desire when and how and what to be to be sanctioned so in one that way the devotee should always have faith that when i have given my life to the lord to engage in devotion service why should i worry anything about me huh? that's not a concern everything the lord will take care including how to do when to do such devotion service that it's a mystical path that we are taking this devotion service is a mystical path one should have faith if one has no faith it becomes too rational then he will get completely confused he will not feel the presence of prabhupada at all here if you don't feel the presence of prabhupada you will feel totally disconnected so if you have faith then you will see everything gets connected and mystically everything will work we chant hare krishna we follow what prabhupada told and then we get direction every day after day what to do and all the dots will be connected by the lord where to lead us at the end of the day at the end of the year at the end of the decade what preaching has to happen what success has to come what failure has to come this is not our business that connecting the dots is his work he fixes the dots that even karmis believe that many things are destined जय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद्भागवत की जय जगद्गुरु शिल प्रभुपात की जय